Okay, welcome back everyone to CUBE coverage here at AWS ReMars 2022. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. ReMars, part of the three big re-events. Re-invent is the big one, reinforces security. ReMars is the confluence of industrial space, of automation, robotics, and machine learning. Got a great guest here, Muhammad Hasil, Senior Consultant, Solutions Architect at Cap Gemini. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Good so we just, you just were hearing the conversation we had with the professor from Okta ML, uh, Professor Washington. So you know, he's in the, he's in the weeds on machine learning. He's down and dirt, getting dirty with all the hardcore, uncoupling it from the hardware. Machine learning has gone really supernova in the past couple of years, and this show points to the tipping point where machine learning is driving space, it's driving robotics, industrial edge at at unprecedented rates. So it's kind of moving from the old, I won't say old, a couple of years ago, and the legacy AI. I mean, old school AI is kind of the same new school with a twist. It's just modernized and has faster, cheaper, smaller chips. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, but there is a change also in the way it's working. So uh, you had the classical AI where you are detecting something and then you're making an action. Uh, you are perceiving something, uh, ma making an action. You are detecting something and you're assuming a per uh, something that has been perceived. Uh, but now we are moving towards more deeper learning. Uh, deep, uh, so AI where you have to train your model to mm -hmm. do things or to detect things and uh, hope that it will work. And there's like, of course, a lot of research going on <laughs> yeah. into uh, explainable AI to help facilitate that. Yeah. But that's where the challenges come into play. Well, Mama, first let's take, what do you do over there? Talk about your, your role specifically. You do a lot of systems architecting uh, around AI, machine learning. What's your role, what's your focus? Yeah, um, so we basically are working in automotive to uh, help OEMs and tier one suppliers uh, validate ADAS functions that they are working on. So advanced driving assistance systems. Mm -hmm. um, there are many levels that are, are uh, when we talk about it, so it can be something simple like, you know, uh, blind spot detection, uh, just a warning function, um, and it goes all the way, so uh, SAE, so. Uh, so there's like the easy yeah. stuff, and then the hard stuff. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. That's uh, what you're getting at. Yeah, you know. and, and the easy stuff uh, you can test, validate uh, yeah. quite easily because if you get it wrong, yeah. the impact is not that high. The complicated stuff, if you have it wrong, then <laughs> that can be very <laughs> dangerous. Uh, well, I got to say, the automotive one of those areas is so fascinating because it's been so archaic and just in the past recent years, and Tesla's the poster child for this. You see that, you go, oh my yeah. God, I love that car. I want to have, it's a software driven car. and It's amazing. And, and I don't get a Tesla now because it's, it's more like, I should have gotten it earlier. Now I'm going to just hold my ground. Everyone has yeah, it. Everyone's got it in Palo Alto. <laughs> I'm not going to get another car. No way. So, but you're starting to see a lot of the all other manufacturers just in the past five years, they're leveling up. It may not be as cool and sexy as the Tesla, but it's, they're there. Yeah. And so, what are they dealing with when they talk about data and AI? What's, just, what's some of the challenges that you're seeing that they're grappling with uh, in terms of getting things integrated, developing pipelines, R&D, they wrangling data, take us through some yeah. of the things. I mean, uh, like, when I think about the challenges that autonomous or the automakers are facing, uh, I can think of three big ones. Um, so first is the amount of data they need to do their training and more importantly, the validation. Mm -hmm. So we are talking about petabytes or hundred of petabytes of data that has to be uh, analyzed, uh, validated, annotated, so labeling to create uh, ground truth, uh, mm -hmm. processed, reprocessed many times with every iteration of a new software. Um, so that is a lot of data, a lot of computational power, and you need to ensure that all of the processing, all of uh, handling of the data allows you complete transparency of what is happening to the data, as well as complete traceability. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're for homologation, so approval process for these functions to, so that they can be uh, released in cars that can be used on public roads. You need to have traceability, like you can, you are supposed to be able to reproduce the data to validate your uh, work that was done so you can yeah. like prove that your function is successful or working as expected. Um, so this, the big data is the, the first challenge I uh, see that all the automotive makers are tackling. Um, the second big one um, I see is um, to understanding 
how much testing is enough. So uh, with AI or with, with classical approach, you have certain requirements, how a function is supposed to work. Um, you can test that with some test cases based on your architecture and you have a successful or failed result. Uh, with deep learning, it gets more complicated. What are they doing with deep learning? Give an example. Um, I mean, so you, are, you need to then start thinking about statistics that I will test enough data with like a failure rate of potentially like 0.001%. Yeah. Uh, how much data do I need to test to make sure that I am achieving that rate? Um, so then we are talking about in terms of statistics, which requires a lot of data because the failure rate that we want to have is so low. And it's not only uh, like failure in terms of that something is always detected and uh, if it's there, but it's also um, having like a low false positive rate. So you're only detecting objects which are there and not like mm -hmm. phantom objects. What's some of the trends you're seeing across the client base uh, in terms of the patterns that they're all kind of, what, where's the state of their mindset and position with, with AI and, and some of the work they're doing? Are they feeling, you feel like they're all crossed over, across the chasm, so to speak, in terms of uh, executing? Are they still in experimental mode and, and driving the, the full capabilities? Is it conservative or is it progressive? I mean, it's a mixture of both. Um, so I am I'm in, in German automotive, where mm -hmm. I'm, I'm from, um, there is, uh, for functions which are more complicated ones, there is definitely hesitancy to uh, release them too early in the car, uh, unless we are sure uh, mm -hmm. that they are safe. Uh, but of course, uh, for functions which are uh, assisting the driver's everyday usage, mm -hmm. uh, they are widely available. Um, like one of the things, like so when we talk about this uh, complex function. Highly available or, or, or available? Well. I would say highly available. <laughs> higher, that's higher availability and yeah. highly available. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know there's so, a distinction. So, yeah, I mean. Yeah. I, I bring it up as a joke, yeah, it's a Jedi, okay, Jedi I, contract. I, I, <laughs> I mean, in, in, in like our architecture, so when we are developing our solution, high availability is one of our requirements that mm -hmm. it, it is high available. But um, the ADAS functions are now available in more and more cars. Yeah. Uh, well, latency matter. I mean, I, I, it's yeah. kind of a joke of storage, but it's a storage joke. Yeah. But, you know, I, it's I, latency. I you got yeah. that? Okay. <laughs> but these are decisions that have to be made. Um, they right? are. I mean, I mean, they are. They are still being made. Uh, so, I mean, we are. We haven't re good. reached like level five, which is the highest level of <laughs> autonomous uh, driving yet on public roads. That's hard. That's hard to do. Uh, yeah. And I mean, the 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 biggest uh, difference, like as you go above these levels, is in terms of. Uh, availability, so are they, these functions, yeah. can they handle all possible scenarios, or are they only available in certain scenarios? Mm -hmm. uh, and of course the responsibility. So is, in the end, so with Tesla, you would be, like if you had a one, you would be <laughs> the person who is uh, in control or responsible yeah. to monitor it. But as we Actually, go the reason I don't have a Tesla, all my family would want one. I don't want to get everyone <laughs> a Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but, but that, that's the, so yeah. the liability is currently on you if like, you're not monitoring All right, so talk it. about AWS, the relationship that yeah. Capgemini has with AWS. Obviously, the partnership's there, you're here, uh, and this show is really a commitment to, this is a future, to me, this is just like, this is the future. Yeah. We're, this is it all right here. Industrial innovation is going to come massive. Back office cloud, done deal, data centers, hybrid, somewhat multi-cloud, I guess but hybrid is a steady state in the back office cloud. Game over. Yeah. Amazon, Azure, Google, Alibaba, done. So super clouds underneath, great. This is a digital transformation in the industrial area. Yeah. This yeah, I is mean, the big thing. What's your relationship with AWS? Um, so, as I mentioned, the first challenge, data. Like, we have so much data, so much computational power, and it's not something that is always needed. You need it, like, on demand. And this is where like uh, a hyperscaler uh, cloud provider like AWS can mm -hmm. be the key to uh, achieve like the high uh, the acceleration that we are providing to our customers mm -hmm. using our technology built on top of AWS services. Um, we did a breakout session uh, this um, uh, during Remars uh, where we demonstrated uh, a, a, a couple of small tools that we have developed mm -hmm. out of our offering. Uh, one of them was uh, ability to stream data. Uh, from the vehicle that is collecting data worldwide. So during the demo, we did it from 
uh, Vegas, so driving on the strip, as mm -hmm. well as from Germany. Um, and while we are, uh, while this data is uploaded, it's at the same time real time anonymized uh, to make sure it, uh, yeah, we are privacy, compliant with course. the data privacy, uh, of security. Course. Yeah, that's um, hard to do right yeah, there. And so the faces are blurred, the licenses are blurred. Uh, we also then at the same time can run uh, object detection. Uh, so we have real time monitoring of what our fleet is doing uh, worldwide and, and do you, I'm just curious, do you do yeah. that blurring, is that part of a managed service, you call an API or is that built um, into the code? So from uh, like part of our DSV, we have many different service offerings, so data production, data uh, test strategy, orchestration, mm -hmm. so part of data production is uh, worldwide data collection uh, and we can then also offer data management services which include then um, anonymization, data quality check. Uh, and that's a service share. you provide? Yeah. To the customer, okay, yeah. got it, okay. So, uh, um, of course, like, in, in collaboration with the customer. Uh, so our, like, platform is very modular, microservices based, uh, the idea being, uh, if the customer already has a, a good uh, ML model for anonymization, we can plug it into our platform running on AWS. Uh, if they want to use it, we can develop one or we can use one of our existing ones or something off the shelf or like any other supplier can mm -hmm. provide one as well. And we all integrate. So you're, you're tight with Amazon Web Services in terms of your, your cloud, your service. It's a, it's, a, it's a cloud. Yeah. It's a Capgemini super cloud, basically. Exa Exactly. Okay, so this we call we call it super cloud. <laughs> we made that a thing and, and, and uh, reinvent. Charles Fitzgerald would disagree, but we will debate him. It's a super cloud. But okay, you got your super cloud. Um, what's the coolest thing that you think you're doing right now that people should pay attention to? I mean, the the cool thing uh, that we are currently working on. So uh, I, I, from the keynote today, they talked about also uh, synthetic data for validation. No, that was phenomenal. Um, so I that mean, was we, phenomenal. We are working on digital twin creation. So we are capturing yeah. data in real world, creating a virtual uh, identity of it, and that allows you the freedom to um, create multiple scenarios out of it. So that's mm -hmm. also something where we are using uh, machine learning to determine what are the parameters you need to mm -hmm. uh, change between, or so you have one scenario such as like a cut-in scenario, and you can the change- The scenario? A cut-in scenario, okay. so someone is cutting in front of you, okay, or yeah, an yeah. overtake scenario, <laughs> uh, and so, I mean, in real world, someone will do it in, in probably a nicer way, uh, but of course, in, at, it is possible at some point- Cognition to the cars, yeah. here comes a, a vehicle. <laughs> I mean, at some point, some might, someone would be very aggressive with it, uh, yeah. We might not record it. You might be able to predict uh, too. Yeah. I mean, the predictions. You could say this guy's weaving. He's a potential uh, candidate. It, it is possible, yes. Uh, but I mean, but to ensure scenario. that we are testing these scenarios, we can uh, translate a, a real-world scenario into a digital world. Change the parameters so the distance between those two is different, and use ML, uh, so machine learning, to change these parameters. Uh, so this is exciting, and uh, the other thing we are... Um, that is pretty cool, I would admit that's very yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, the other thing we um, like are trying to do is uh, reduce the cost for the customer in the end. So we are collecting petabytes of data. Um, every time they make updates to the software, they have to re-simulate it or replay this data. So that petabytes, petabytes, of <laughs> data. Uh, and and uh, physical uh, sometimes yeah. on a physical uh, hardware yeah. in loop device, uh, and then this. Re that's plate. called a really heavy edge. You don't move yeah. that. You don't want to be moving <laughs> I mean, that around the Amazon cloud. Yeah, that, that, that's that's <laughs> the challenge. Uh, and uh, once we have replayed this or re-simulated it, we still have to calculate the KPIs out of it. Yeah. And uh, what we are trying to do is m optimize this test orchestration so that we are minimizing the re simulation, so you don't want the data to be going to the edge yeah. unnecessarily, and uh, once we get this data back, to uh, optimize the way we are doing the calculation, so you're not There's calculating. There's a huge data integrity management, yeah. new kind of thing going on here. It's kind of, is it new or is it? Uh, I mean, it, it, it it's sounds the, new to the, me. the scale is new. The so okay, uh, the the management of the data, having the whole traceability that that has been in automotive, so also Capgemini is involved in aerospace, so in aerospace, yeah. having this kind of high, uh, this validation uh, be very strictly monitored mm -hmm. is norm, uh, but now we have to think about how to do it on this large scale. Uh, and that's why, like, I, I think that's, that's the biggest challenge, and hopefully what we are trying to uh, yeah, solve with our DASV offering. 
All right, Mama, thanks for coming on theCUBE. I really appreciate it. Great way to close out Remars, yeah. our last interview of the show. Thanks for coming on, I appreciate yeah. your time. I mean, like, just one uh, last comment. Like, so I, I think in automotive, uh, like, so part of the automation, the future is quite exciting, and, and, and I think that's where, like, yeah. it, it's, we have to be hopeful that, like. Well, the show is be, all about hope. I mean, you, yeah. had, you had space, moon, moon um, uh, habitat, you had climate change potential solutions, you have new functionality that we've been waiting for. And you know, I've watched yeah. every episode of Star Trek and, and Skynet, and kind of Skynet <laughs> going on air. The, the, the robots. <laughs> robots, <laughs> they're even running cubes, they're even robot cubes host oh, someday. Yeah. Uh, you never know. Yeah, thanks for coming on, appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Okay, that's theCUBE here wrapping up. Remars, I'm John Furrier, you're watching theCUBE. Stay with us for the next event next time. Thanks for watching.